Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series number 31. We have a frontal radiograph of bilateral knees in a patient uh, presenting with, you know, very mild chronic knee pain. And the question that I have for you guys is, the most common location for the findings shown on the evolved bone is what? Is it inferior, lateral, medial, or superior lateral? What's the most common location for the finding that we're seeing in one of the bones below. And of course, if we take a look here, the finding that we're seeing here is a bipartite patella. So if you take a look here, we have an unfused ossification center, right, right here along the patella, and it's oriented superior laterally along the patella because this is superior, this is inferior, this is medial, this is lateral. And this unfused ossification center is superior lateral with respect to the patella. And in fact, this is a bilateral finding in this case. It's not always bilateral, but it can be bilateral. And this is just a normal variant that we see. Uh, sometimes it's confused for a fracture. This is a nice example of what a bipartite patella is. The core exam often tests you know, normal variants. So this is a very important one for all of us to know and understand. So a bipartite patella, what is it? It's an unfused accessory ossification center, right? This occurs, you know, in two, even up to 8% of the population. Most uh, literature will say two to 3%, but actually up to 8% of the population can have a bipartite patella. It's bilateral often, like in this case. So in about a little bit less than half of cases, we see a bi bilateral bipartite patella. This is much more common in males, right? Nine times a nine to one ratio between male and females with bipartite patella. And the interesting thing is about this is that when you, for example, if you had a patellar fracture, if you were to piece together all the components of the fracture, they would fit together very nicely. But that's not true with a bipartite patella. Usually if you were to, you know, fuse the unfused accessory ossification center with a normal native patella, they wouldn't fit in well together. That's what I mean by the parts won't fit well together. And that's how sometimes you can differentiate a bipartite patella from a fracture. The other thing is, is that the, the accessory ossification center will be well corticated, it'll be very smooth, right? As opposed to a fracture, which will be, you know, ill-defined with jagged, ragged edges, right? This is rarely symptomatic. Now in 2% of cases, this can be symptomatic and present with anterior knee pain, particularly after like a traction injury or sports injury. And if you were to do an MRI, you may see some marrow edema in the patella or the secondary ossification center or in the synchondrosis between the ossification center and the native patella. So that's, you know, sometimes we often do MRI just to see if there's really an issue with a symptomatic bipartite patella, but the vast majority of these are asymptomatic. There are three types of bipartite patella, right? So the most common is the superior lateral, as you saw in this case, in about 70 to 75% of cases. Lateral would be about 20 to 25% of cases, and then inferior, very rare, maybe one or 2% of cases has an inferior bipartite patella. Notice that there's no medial bipartite patella. That's an important consideration, right? Because if we see a lucency along the medial aspect of the patella, it's almost always a fracture, right? So that's, that has helped me a lot in my practice. And sometimes when I'm looking at, you know, radiographs, if I see a lucency along the medial aspect of the patella, I know automatically that this is likely not going to be a bipartite patella. It's going to be a fracture. So hope that was helpful. Thank you so much. Tune in next week for another super high yield MSK unknown case.